Hello, this is Randy, K7AGE. I'm at the Antique Wireless Museum in East Bloomfield, New York. I was here three years ago. I shot a lot of video inside, so I'm not going to uh, duplicate a lot of that effort. So if you haven't seen the video, go look on my K7AGE channel for the Antique Wireless Museum. You'll find my 2019 video. So here's the museum building. And what's exciting here is that off onto the side is the new expansion for the multi-station ham shack. So the construction's going on. Maybe next time when I'm here this will be fully operational. So here's the new ham station ham shack extension from the back side of the building. There'll be four stations in there. And there's you see a tower sections here laying here, so there'll be something in the sky here eventually. See, here's the inside of the new Ham, ham Shack Ham Station. There'll be uh, four stations along the wall, including some, including some of the vintage or antique things. You can see in the end there where that office area will, will be studded in. So I'm the first non-staff to see the inside of here. So this is a K7 AGE AWA exclusive. This will be really neat. Looking forward to hearing them on the air soon. So this is the media and library building and some storage that's behind the main building. So I haven't been in here for, before, so we're gonna go in here and take a look. So here's uh, part of their documentation files. You know, I see proceedings from the Radio Institute of Engineers 1931, so a lot of very historical. Looks like an old uh, Nippow or something uh, rotating disc. <laughs> Early television. File cabinets filled, a lot of manuals. So anybody involved with television repair will remember these writer uh, television manuals. It was probably the competition to the Sam's Photofax. We even got some teletype manuals down here. If you got one of those old clunking machines. So these cabinets below the old horns here. A lot of military manuals and photo facts. And it's all organized. We're upstairs now. Now this is one of the bookshelves here filled with bound books. And I'm just looking at some of the titles here. I see old GE tube manuals and a Fairchild manual and um, just lots of old electronic and radio manuals or books. So there's <laughs> several bookshelves with materials. And there's another aisle. Quite a library. So now I'm in the media room where they have various uh, playback and recording machines because they have a pretty good library of historical media. So here's shelves of just all sorts of reel-to-reel -reel tapes of various audio. Let me see if I can get over here. Ah! He found the light switch. So this is all inventory. It's probably best to use a computer to find out what is in here. Here's a bunch of um, the old transcription discs. Yeah, it looks like a bunch of VHS tapes. And more transcription. We got some more books here. Uh, there's a book on Crosley, you know, from WLW, uh, Radio Cronkite, Edison. <laughs> And some more. It looks like a bunch of VHS tapes. The Antique Wireless Association does have a YouTube channel. And they have many videos on there which are really pretty interesting. So I recommend uh, go over there and find that and subscribe to them. This wasn't here when I was here three years ago. This is a replica of the one BCG transmitter that was used for the 100th anniversary 
operating event back in December of 2021. And this is uh, the original, well, replica of the transmitter. It was used by amateurs to get across the Atlantic. And here's uh, the four tubes. You can see the coils, tuning capacitor. It took work to get this going. And so did the original. If you read in the Radio Club of America uh, proceedings, it talks about Armstrong and the guys during the test rebuilding the transmitter, getting more motor generator sets and stuff to make this work. This is the proceedings I'm talking about from the Radio Club of America. You can get this online. It's really interesting reading about, about what they did a hundred years ago. You can see where the uh, capacitor here art. Big coil. There's a fuse in here and this would uh, blow. It would just completely blow apart, just like a, a gunshot going off. <laughs> May not be a whole lot here, but it wasn't easy to get running. So I'm here with Len, and your call sign is? W2BSN. W2BSN. And I just previously showed showed everybody the 1BCG transmitter that was used right. for the first amateur communication. One-way contact. One-way. Right. Now we're going to talk two-way. Two and this is the transmitter. And this is a replica of what... The transmitter for the two-way so right Len's going to explain a little bit of this well this this replica was built by uh, Bob Ray W2ZM and his son Mike who I think was W2ZE but Mike now has the ZM call sign and they're long time uh, AWA members so what this is is four 203 A's and uh, this is as faithful a reproduction as they were able to make of this transmitter. And we, that was made when, do you know? Uh, in the 80s sometime. 80s? I don't know the exact year. Okay. And we just picked this up from Mike Raid. Bob passed away quite a few years ago. But we just picked this up from Mike Raid. So it's brand new here. We haven't had any time to really check it out. It came off the truck. Sunday. <laughs> so uh, it's been here like a week. <laughs> it, it, no, three days. Three days. Wow. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of details on it right now, but I do know it's a self-excited oscillator. I believe it's a Hartley, and it's uh, it runs raw AC on the plates. So it, it'll be interesting to hear this thing on the air. We intend next year to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the very first two-way amateur radio contact which happened in 1923. And again, the amateurs were leading the way on this. Wow. So with the AC on the plates, it's going to have a pretty raw... A very you know, raucous uh, note. It'll probably take up a little bit of bandwidth. And could, could, could be a little wider than your normal. I mean, people are saying, <laughs> what is that on the air? Yes. Uh, it, it'll be it'll be unique, and there'll be no question what you're hearing. So, how much power do you think this uh, runs? I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five hundred watts. Four to five hundred watts out of four tubes. Yep. self oscillator Look at all the copper straps down in there to tie it all together. Big coil. I like the belt between the two variable capacitors. Yep. That's they, you know tracking. to make sure the the tuning is tracked and. Yeah. Come around here, and meters. there's antenna current meters. Yeah. And this is the antenna connections here. So and you want to is... make sure that they both balance. Right. Push pull. Yeah. Uh, so you don't need an antenna tuner. It's basically the yeah, final the part. Final. And this is, I imagine, 160 meters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. Somewhere in that neighborhood. <laughs> it's not exact. Well, thank you for showing that, and we're looking forward to seeing that or hearing that on the air oh, next we're, year. We're, we're definitely excited about it, yeah. and uh, we had a great time with the 1BCG one. Unfortunately, I couldn't go, yeah. but they took it down to Connecticut, and yeah. they just had a ball. Oh, yeah, Ed Gable did a wonderful video about that, especially how the amateurs redirected 
and the Radio Corporation of America, uh, RCA, they completely scrapped their plan of using uh, alternator transmitters. Right. Canceled like a dozen of those things and tubes were the future. And you can't really even take one out oh here. Oh boy. <laughs> Continuous numbers, 50 hour guarantee. 50. <laughs> United Electric Company, US Navy, 203s. 203A. A's. Wow. Well, thank you very much, Len, for showing us this. And no problem. And uh, it's the 1MO transmitter. 1 1MO was the call sign of the yep. gentleman that uh, was here in the US. Yep. And we're really excited about uh, being able to put this on the air. Thank you. It was great. You're welcome. A few shots of the inside of the museum here. I'm not going to go into detail. You can go to my video from uh, from three years ago. So this is the 1920s radio store. Here's a cat's whisker crystal radio. You get that little wire on the piece there and try and get a station in a 1920s workbench look at the soldering iron. how you like that huh probably heated up from a fire so this is the multi-purpose room this i don't believe was set up three years ago when i was here so they do classes adult education here is a uh, i'd say the classic five tube super hat receiver to use in a classroom and the parts on the board there and the schematic. I think I remember this, one of these things from my 1970s high school electronics class. Here uh, they have a demonstration uh, stereo system of uh, solid state and tube amplifiers. I got a Yamaha CR1020 it looks like receiver and I remember these, the Dynacos. You could buy these, either assembled or a kit. And I think they're probably still sought after, along with a pair of Advent speakers. So young people with their phones and their MP3 players have never really probably heard what good audio can be. And here's a display of the circuit boards here that they sell. A Morse code trainer, capacitor DC leakage tester, high voltage power supply, low power AM transmitter, Universal battery eliminator, uh, special guitar amp, AM slider, and AWA signal sniffer. And I believe these are available on the AWA website store. How do you like this Hickok model 225K classroom size VTVM? You can see this from the back row. You got a leader scope. And we have another night VTVM here on the left. Here's a neat poster, a chart of the electromagnetic radiations. Everything from low frequency radio waves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays, and secondary cosmic rays. At least that's what it was called when this was uh, produced. Uh, I think you can buy these online. I have one that's very similar at home, but uh, there's a lot of information on here. Here's like a radio spectrum frequency wavelength where the amateur and the Broadcasting, Beacons Experimental. Yeah, I just found the copyright date on here. It's 1938. A lot of this is the same and probably some of it's changed. And here looks like a project, an old radio being worked on. Yeah, a Zenith. A Zenith, okay. This looks like some type of Edison uh, death machine here. It looks like a Van de Graaff generator, but look at all that brass. And <laughs> So just some more quick views. Some of the stuff here, it's you know for the hams, you know, a bunch of helicrafters. Just got all sorts of stuff in here. It's just wonderful. And there's a whole collection of heath kits. It just goes on and on in here. If you're ever in the south of Rochester, New York, visiting, plan to spend a half a day down at the Antique Wireless Association Museum. I believe this is a new exhibit from the, about the Radio Club of America. This was formed, I believe, before the ARRL. And we have a membership book over here. 
And one of the entries in this member book is Armstrong, E.H., Howard Armstrong, 1032 Warburton Avenue, Yonkers, New York. If you don't know about Armstrong, you've got to Google him and learn his history about radio. Very, very interesting. So the books here were from 1909. That's when the date on there. Also, I'm going to tilt up here. This is Harold Beveridge of the Beveridge Antenna. He went uh, over to Scotland, I believe. He was actually on the ship going over, uh, I forget the fellow's name, for the 1 BCG test. and. Uh, ended up using a beverage antenna to receive the signal for the United States for the first amateur crossing. So I believe this uh, collection of tubes on display is new when I was here before. Really interesting envelopes back then. There's an old Jennings vacuum variable capacitor. Some transmitting tubes in the bottom. Yeah, big one up here on top. Neat looking old boxes. Zenith, Philco. Tube testers. Look at the size of that meter. Must be 10 inches in diameter. And Uncle Rochester went to school here, so here's stuff that was built here in Rochester, New York. A lot of Harris see here and other things I don't recognize but this is what you see when you enter the front door and you can spend hours in here looking around so that's all for my visit to the Antique Wireless Association Museum in East Bloomfield New York if you're all interested in old radios and old electronics you really ought to think about becoming a member they have a nice quarterly magazine and a yearly review book with nice uh, in-depth in articles uh, go to their website. There's virtual 360 degree camera views of many of the uh, displays inside. This is Randy K7AGE 73.